Hi, thanks for joining this tutorial on how to read a Simmons crosstab. If you're watching this, you're likely a student, which means that you are probably somewhere between the ages of 18 and 24, you own a smartphone, and it's not a Blackberry, and you agree with the statement that it's important to continue learning new things throughout your life. Am I right? Does this sort of sound like you? Chances are good that it does, and not because it is what I think a college student is like. It's because I know those are characteristics that describe the majority of college students. How do I know that? Through the power of one of the world's largest databases that has been collecting information on what the American population thinks, feels, and does for decades, Simmons Market Research. In advertising, we're asked to come up with ideas, ideas that are meant to spark people's curiosity and engage them in a relationship with our brands. At MediaVest, we used to call that innovation that works. Our creativity was meaningless if we couldn't prove that we were engaging the right people. You've heard about a number of ways to use research to understand who your likely consumers are, and Simmons is just one of those tools that provides you with a treasure trove of information to get smarter about who you're going to talk to and how. While mining databases can seem overwhelming at first, it's actually quite simple once you learn a few basics. Today, we are simply going to learn how to read a, cross -tabs out, a, a, a Simmons output, which is called a crosstab. You've heard of a thousand points of light, right? Well, a crosstab is just a way to organize those thousand points of light, or data, into a digestible format. So for this example today, I'm interested in learning more about young women's attitudes towards the internet. Before we get started, it's important to learn some of the key terms used in a crosstab analysis. It's sort of like learning a new language. So the picture on the left-hand side is just a depiction of a smaller piece of a larger crosstab. The total heading in the column header here um, represents the total survey respondents, and the numbers in the bottom right-hand cell represent all those respondents who agreed with the statement I like websites that take special care to protect my privacy. Let's start by just defining the terms and we'll get to the actual meaning on the next slide. So the first term in that cell, sample. The sample is simply the total number of respondents to the Simmons survey. Um, in this instance, we're looking at a total number of 24,054 respondents. These people are selectively chosen to be representative of the total US po population. In doing so, we are able to generalize from these 24,054 to the total U.S. population. This is represented by the weighted number, and in this case, the total population is 226,276,000. One important thing to note and to be very careful of is these three zeros that you see here next to that weighted um, designation. That means that the number is represented in thousands. So you have to add those three zeros to the end of the number. So the weighted population is not 226, 200, 276,000. It is actually 20, 226 million. That's a very important point to remember. Moving along, the next two important terms to understand are vertical percentage and horizontal percentage. The vertical percentage is the percent of respondents under the column heading who responded positively to the question, I like websites that take special care to protect my privacy. So in this case, a total of 74.2% of all people agree that they like websites that take special care to protect their privacy. Now the horizontal percentage um, is actually the opposite view of that. The horizontal percentage represents the percent of respondents across the row heading um, that responded to the question. Here this number is 100% because we're looking at all of the people in the survey who agreed with the statement. This will start to make more sense on the next slide. Just want to wrap up with the final number um, to understand and that is an index. An index number looks at a percentage in relation to the average, with the average being represented as 100. Any characteristic that is greater than the average will be greater than 100. Any characteristic that is less than the average will be less than 100. Let's take a look at the larger cross tab to see how this all plays out. As you can see, I've now added a column that references just what females 18 to 34, because those were the people that I said I was interested in learning about. The first thing we can tell by looking at the total total cell here is that there are there were 2,615 
females 18 to 34 who responded to this survey. Generalizing that to the American population, we can infer that in the U.S. there are a total of 32,766,000 women between the ages of 18 and 34. That represents 14.5% of the total population. But I want to know what percent of all women 18 to 34 care about websites protecting their privacy. So I look at the cell that corresponds to women 18 to 34 and I like websites that take care of my privacy. That's this cell right here. Those are the numbers that I'm going to be focusing on in answering this question. If I care about what women 18 to 34 think, then I want to look at the number that represents the views of the 32 million women that we have identified as being between the ages of 18 to 34 in the US. So in order to do so, I am dividing the 29,450,000 women who agree with that statement by the 32,766,000 who are in the United States. Dividing those numbers, as you can see here, represents a total of almost 90% of all young women who are concerned about websites protecting their privacy. The beauty of the crosstab analysis is that they do all the math for you. All you have to do is understand which number you're looking for. So in this instance, the vertical percentage number, the 89.9%, is the answer to what percent of all women 18 to 34 care about websites protecting their privacy. Now let's ask the question differently. Um, now I want to understand, let's pretend that I work um, at the agency for Netflix and I need to know who I should target to grow my user base. Netflix is known for binge watching, so I want to talk to people who consider themselves to be TV addicts. Who do these people tend to be? Well, looking down the total column, as designated here, I can see that 51 million people in the United States agree with the statement that I am a TV addict. Slide over to the column that represents women between the ages of 18 to 34, and you'll see that number drops to 7,637,000. So 7 million divided by the total 51 million represents 15% of people who claim to be TV addicts, are women 18 to 34. That's a fairly small percentage of the whole, so they might not be my most likely prospects based solely on this analysis. The horizontal percentage answers the question, what percent of people within the row heading fall under the column heading? Finally, we're going to look at the index number. Um, I'm trying to drive advocacy of Netflix, so I want to target people who are most likely to write a review. Since an index represents your proximity to the average, if a target population is considerably above the average, I can assume that they are more likely to engage in that behavior. In this example, we have 29.3% of all women 18 to 34 say that they sometimes post reviews, ratings or reviews online for other cons um, consumers to look at. Um, so, that sounds like a pretty good number, but, I, but how do I know if that makes them more or less an average? Well, earlier we learned that women 18 to 34 represent 14.5% of the total population. So if I divide the 29%, the 29.3% of the women who agree with that statement by 14.5%, which is a representation in the total population, I get uh, 202, which means that people who post ratings or reviews online are 102% more likely to be between the ages of 18 to 34. So overall, if I target young women, I can be confident that they are more likely to advocate for my brand than the average person. So that was a lot of information to cover. Let's try some analysis on our own. Go to the worksheet and answer the questions there. You may want to watch this tutorial again as you make your way through the worksheet. If you find it confusing at first, don't despair. It just takes a little practice to get comfortable with the concepts. But once you do, you will have mastered a tool that will prove to be a powerful tool of persuasion that will be invaluable to you in selling your ideas through to your client. 
You no longer have to convince your client you understand their consumer. You can show them proof.